Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I installed an OLED screen and a rotary encoder to my clipper setup, um, which is installed on my Ender 3 v 3SE printer because as you can see, the screen and the controller became useless after um, Clipper. Um, of course, you can control your printer using um, a front end such as Mainsail, but certainly having some basic control on your printer is a lot more helpful. So, um, this is the OLED screen I'm going to use today, and uh, it has a controller chip named SSD1309 and uh, um, it's 2.42 inches in size. Uh, this is different from the small screen that you can see everywhere. And the biggest difference will be that uh, it's got a 7-pin connector which um, supports both uh, SPI and I2C connections. So what I'm going to do today is to modify it uh, for use with uh, I2C interface instead of SPI, which is what this module have been pre-configured. And this one is the rotary encoder that I'm going to use today and um, because a uh, rotary encoder is basically uh, mechanical switches in one package uh, it can be connected to GPIO pins later um, I'm going to show you how to set them all up in the uh, Clipper configuration. So this is again a uh, 4-pin I2C interface and I'm going to modify this one to the I2C right now. First, I uh, pulled out the uh, flat cable and according to the uh, written in on the PCB, uh, I have to desolder R8 position, and then I have to solder together the uh, those R9 through R12 positions. On the R8 position, which I have to disorder, uh, there was a small a zero ohm resistor, and I'm going to melt everything and remove it away. And then, by dropping a small solder blob, I connected the necessary positions. The finished board became quite messy with soldering flux, so I decided to clean it up a little bit using isopropyl alcohol. What you have to do is to soak the board with enough alcohol and then wipe them out with the um, kitchen towel or a cotton swab like what you see here and uh, you have to carefully remove all the moisture inside the 
connectors. Now the flat cable is reconnected and I think this board is ready to be used on I2DC interface. Now I'm going to make the cable to make connection to the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to use this four wire um, ribbon cable. I have already made a comprehensive um, crimping um, instruction video quite some time ago and I'm going to leave a link in the description and as a link on the screen above. The connection is made using DuPont type connectors and I have crimped terminals on each cable. Once you have finished crimping the terminals, you just have to slide them in to the DuPont housing. Make sure you push the uh, connectors all the way in and um, when it's fully inside, you can hear very small click. But as you can see, uh, pushing the connectors into the housing is not always very easy. So in that case, you can use a um, male connector to pull them all the way in. And the connector is ready. And I'm going to make connectors on this uh, other side. And for this side, I'm going to use one pin housing instead of four pin ones. This is the finished cable. Before moving further, this is the uh, 3D printed case for this project. It houses a Pi Zero 2 and on the front there are holes for uh, OLED and etc. etc. I'll just show you through how uh, this case fits together. Design of this case will be in the description below. This is the rotary encoder and it's already wired as you can see. And here is the 12 millimeter text switch. Uh, I will use this to easily turn on or shut down the Pi.
So let me show you what's going on uh, with these wires here. Um, if you look at the rotary encoder, they have five legs like this. And two on this side, this side are for button function, like, 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 like this. And three pins on this side are for rotation. And this, this pin on the center is supposed to be the ground and either one of these two has to be ground so there are three signal lines uh, from the from a rotary encoder so what I did was just simply connected these two ground pins I just chose to use this one as a ground and connected it to the center pin here and this ground pin is joined with the ground pin on the button switch The button switch uh, usually have four legs, uh, but you can and you can use either side, either on the left or on the right, uh, to read out the uh, uh, button um, state status, and um, you can choose any one of the uh, pins as a ground. I just chose to use this one as a ground and what happens is that um, these two pins on the upper side and these two pins on the lower side are internally connected so when I chose to use this one as a ground this one also becomes a ground automatically so for this button, I chose to read out the ground and the um, signal with these two wires on the right side and connected them, terminated them with uh, DuPont connectors. It's the same kind of connector used for the OLED. And the same way I have connected a um, three pin DuPont connector from the uh, rotary encoder. I only use the three pins because the ground line as a common have been already terminated right here on the button. So with that, I'm going to show you how each of these components are going to be um, connected to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. I'm going to do the clean installation of the clipper. I used a Pi imager to install the main sail. I have um, um, a configured SSH and the Wi-Fi and etc. Um, a clipper installation is another topic so I'll just browse through. Let's see how it went. 
I have opened the terminal and SSH uh, into the Pi. And um, I have upgraded the system all the way to the latest. And as soon as it was finished, I opened up the main sale and main sale web interface also works all right. I did another um, system wide upgrade. And there you go. Clipper seems to work all right. I used the uh, printer config file uh, made by this person. I'll leave the link in the description. I have uploaded the uh, config file in the main sale and renamed it as a, a printer.cfg. And now it's time to uh, build the printer firmware. And uh, instruction is in the config file itself. Using the uh, make config and follow the instruction in the config file and the firmware file is ready To move this uh, uh, firmware, I used Cyberdog, which is an FTP client for um, Mac. SD card is in and the printer is powered on because there's no way knowing what's going on so I just left it running after um, 10 or 20 minutes later um, I plugged in the printer to the Raspberry Pi in the main sale, after doing some firmware uh, restarts, um, I could see that the screen has changed a little bit. It seems like main sale is not connected in the config file. So I copied the line and put it in the printer config saved restarted and now it seems to work without 
any error. In the dashboard, uh, I can see the temperature reading and everything seems all right. Now I'm going to connect uh, components to the Raspberry Pi, but some of the GPIO pins are already reserved for um, special occasions. For example, this um, accelerometer, which is connected to SPI through six pin connector. So um, accelerometers are not always used, but I would better um, preserve the uh, place for it. Let me plug it in, and this is the SPI channel 0, which corresponds to pin header number 17 to 24. I'll just leave them connected like this and um, continue to connect parts. Uh, first is this power on off button. Signal cable is um, plugged in to GPIO3 pin number 5 and this is where one button can power on and off the Pi and the ground pin is right next to it, pin number 6. I turned on the Pi and uh, continued to uh, set it up. Because power button is a Pi function rather than clipper, so I'm doing this uh, through nano editor in a terminal. I added these two lines, uh, but the uh, uh, command could be omitted, of course. And uh, scrolling down, and if you find this line, uh, you have to comment it out. It's um, uh, disabling the I uh, squared C because those pins are coinciding with the power button. But um, where does our LED going to be connected? Uh, fortunately, we have another I squared C. We are going to see it in the short future. Anyway, um, I saved it and I'm going to shut down the system for now. system is now off and when I press the button it turns on as you see here now let's try turning it off and sure enough the power goes out. Okay, let's uh, do the OLED. STA was plugged to um, header pin 27 and SCK in the pin 28. Now the ground is plugged in um, number 30, which is right nearby, and VCC went to pin 1. Here's a view from a different perspective. On the software side, you have to um, activate a new um, I2C and this is the location that 
I used for the OLED. I opened the config text in nano editor again. and edit these two lines so previously i deactivated the i2c arm and this is the i2c vc for video core the previous one is numbered i2c1 and this one is i2c0 I added a little bit of remark for the future. Save, exit, and uh, restart it by. Now the clipper setup. I found uh, this site, and I'm going to use this one. Because it's in Japanese, I uh, use the translation. And this is very comprehensive and well-written instruction, so I definitely recommend it. Here, one important step is to set up the Pi as an MCU. Uh, follow the link and you get this clipper document. If you have already installed something like ADXL, then um, PyMCU will be in use and you can skip that in that case. I'll just follow the uh, instruction and copy the commands into the co terminal. Change the microcontroller to Linux process and save the exit and uh, follow the make process. This is the last step. I forgot to change the username, so doing it again. In the temporary folder, there must be a Clipper host MCU create, created like this and you're set. Now, the uh, site again. And just copy everything and uh, copy it into my um, Clipper printer config. I'll put it right here. You have to change the I2C number because 0 is what display uses. And then save everything and restart the system. And if you see the MCUR Pi, then um, consider it a success. Uh, maybe you will have to restart more than one time, uh, which is what I did. Although I won't go too deep into these um, options, but they are worth trying when you have problems with um, a funny screen or something like that. Also, if 
the screen does not turn on, then you might want to um, uh, disconnect and reconnect the um, um, cables. In my case, uh, that helped. Okay, screen is on and it's totally inverted because of the option I adjusted before. After um, changing the option again and now it's not inverted. It's normal. Okay, finally, let's do the um, rotary encoder. And I plugged it um, between the uh, ground line and the ADXL um, accelerometer, like you see here. And here is the close up with all the pin numbers. And here is the GPIO map. In regards to the encoder setup, uh, please refer to the configuration reference of Clipper. You can find the relevant section under display like OLED. From this, I copied encoder related uh, portion uh, which includes rotation and the click. And put it in the printer config. I deleted the hash mark. And um, put in the pin number like you see on the screen. And also, I um, um, set the pin pull up and polarity like so. So, for these, um, please refer again to the Clipper document. Anyway, let's see how it works. Okay, click works fine and the rotation works, but um, this is wrong direction. So I went back to the printer config and um, swapped the uh, two pins. I saved and firmware restarted. And now this is the direction I would uh, prefer. Everything looks perfect, so I just removed the ADXL accelerometer and shut the lid. All seems fine. So today I have built a clipper box with display and control so if you own a printer that does not uh, um, support the display under clipper 
This is one of the cost effective ways you can try. So this is it for today's video and thank you all for watching. And I sure hope to meet you again soon. Bye.